I'm Jenna Anthony and this is Apple Dolly Creations. Welcome. This is our second video in our series with our egg people that we are making. Um, so we painted one yesterday. We did the face on another one yesterday. And then last night I painted, um, oh, I used Mod Podge on all three of them to, as a clear coat on the paint. So, this is the large one we did the face on yesterday. And this egg came from Family Dollar, and Dollar General carries this too. He is quite substantial. He is big. Hi, Mom. And he was only $3. Now, the other two was uh, from Dollar Tree. They're, they are much smaller, and they're made to lay flat but we're setting them up. So, and they were two for $1.25, but this one was $3. And this is the one that we're gonna dress today. So I dressed the other two, which I'll show you. Here's this one. And here is this one. Now this one's not completely finished. I have to finish her legs. But she's got a skirt on. Okay. He's got a hat. And I'm going to show you what I used for his hat. But her, I just put a big big bow with lots of ribbon and lace in her on her head so those are those two let me bring him back so I can show you this is what I use for his hat now Dollar Tree is going to be coming out with these you get a four pack of them I just took this paper this is just stuck on there with double-sided tape I just took it off, I covered it in fabric and some trims, and on the top I put a button, on the front I put a button, and then I put a feather on the side. But that's what I started with. This little, I think they're made for as to give us favors. But that's what his hat is, okay? But didn't he turn out cute? And their knees do bend. I just have to work with them. And I'm going to show you what I have inside. But I have to pick up another one for her legs. But didn't he turn out cute? There's his arms. He's holding some flowers. There's his shoes. They have little ties on them. So, I'm going to show you how I got all my measurements, and this is how you measure for the large one or the small one. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. So, his legs is a pool noodle. This is, for the big one, 12 inches long, and you cut it in half. And you need another piece of a pool noodle. It's two inches and you cut it in half, and those are his shoes. So that's done. So we're gonna set that aside. Now for his, how you measure for his clothes. There is a mold mark right here on in the bottom, and that is the center of the bottom. So you take, you go up over where the two pieces of the egg go together. Now, the bottom of this does not need painted because we're covering it and it's never going to be seen. But the top of it does. So I'm going up about an inch and I'm going down to that mold mark. And that's eight inches on this big one. So then you want your length to be nine inches. You want to add an inch to all your diet, all your measurements. And then you go around his, the waist. 
and that's 27 inches. So when you cut your piece of fabric, it's going to be 9 inches by 28 inches. So then I figured out his legs. I sat him on the end of my table. I took my tape measure, and I put the one inch mark right at that mold mark. And I figured out how long I want his legs to go over the edge of the table. So those are 12 inches is what I figured to be a good overhang. So then I cut my fabric 13 inches by five inches wide. And I cut two of those, one for each leg. So that's how you measure any of these, any size, that's how you measure. The waist, add an inch. Go up over the, the center mark, whatever that is, because on those ones, they go together like this. So you have to figure out where your center mark is and you just go from the top to the bottom and, the, and get your center. So then you go from your, go up an uh, inch over, down to the middle of the bottom, and that is how big piece of fabric you need to go to cover him. Now that's the top of this one's pants. Now for her, I did the same thing. I covered her in fabric this very same way, only then I cut another piece of fabric, and this is lace, and I just gathered it to make a skirt. See, she just has an overlay. So I used the pink and white gingham checked, and then just cut another piece for her skirt. So, you have to clear coat these after you paint them because for what, and I use chalk paint, for whatever reason, this paint kind of separates on these eggs. Even though I washed them down with alcohol, I wiped them off twice with alcohol, the paint still wanted to separate. So if you're going to do this, like I said yesterday, I would do the H2O Rust-Oleum spray paint. Now this is four coats on all three of these is four coats of chalk paint to get a good coverage. And then I did two coats of Mod Podge over the face and the, the whole painted area. So now it, it has a nice surface on it and because yesterday I thought I was going to have to sand all three of these down go get spray paint and redo these. But the Mod Podge really helped. So I made him a collar and how I made his collar is two times the diameter of the egg which ended up being 54 inches. And I cut 54 inch. This, all, the, all the fabric is squares and rectangles. That's it. And it's all done with a glue gun. So all of you can do this. So I took a 54 inch length of fabric and three inches wide. So I'm going to show you how I did it on this scrap. And I took that whole length of fabric and I folded it in half and I kept folding it in half and folding it in half until I had about four inches width. Now as I folded it, I made sure that all my top edges were lined up because you don't want your collar to be wonky. So after I made sure that it was all lined up, and take your time doing this, I, I, and I didn't measure, I just eyeballed where my center would be, and I came up about an inch and a half, and I found out where my center was on my fabric. And I, I scalloped this, but you can do the scallops all at one time. I started at the lower corner, and I just cut up to that center mark, and then I cut back down to the side. And all of my scallops on the whole length was done at one time. So you see, they're all done. They're all even the whole length of my collar. I took needle and thread and I just ran a, just an in and out stitch the whole length of the fabric. 
and then gathered it up and laid it out on my tape measure to get 27 inches. When I got it 27 inches, I knotted off my thread. And I worked with that ruffle until I had all the ruffles just about even. And I did that on the right side of the fabric. When I had it all the way I wanted it, I took this trim and little by little, I hot glued the trim onto the ruffle. And as I went along, I made sure that all my ruffles were even or as even as I could get them. And I adjusted the ruffling as I went along the whole length. So this is 27 inches long. And this is our ruffle that's going around his neck. Now I'm doing him, this is Paisley fabric, and I have a man's suiting fabric, this gray pinstripe. So those are going to be his clothes. So I didn't realize when I was doing this, he's going to kind of be black tie when we get done with him. So for his hat... <coughs> Because that other hat is way too small, I picked up at Dollar Tree these hats. They're in the party section, and they're glittered. I did not sand this glitter off. I painted right over top of it, and I painted. I left this uh, glittered band here, so I painted down to the, the band, and then I painted the brim of the hat up. So on the inside of the hat, I painted uh, the whole brim. And I went up about an inch, just so that if you can see underneath of his hat, you won't see any of the color. Now, the one I did was an orange hat, and I painted it with chalk paint and the color Castle. So I did it in gray. And see, I just went up just, just about an inch, inch and a half on the inside of the hat. So I've been working on these probably since 6 o'clock this morning. So we're going to set the ruffle aside. We have his legs cut. We have his feet cut out of the pool noodle. For his shoes, you need two pieces of fabric, whatever you're going to use for his shoes. Uh, this is just t-shirt that I cut. Um, this was a sleeve off of something that I made. So lay it out and fold it in half and kind of like finger press right in the center so when you open this back up you know where the center of your fabric is take your piece of pool noodle now this is two inches by the width of a pool noodle and i'm putting glue on both of these back edges and this does not take a lot and i'm putting it right above that center mark that I pressed in. And I'm going to put glue on both sides. And it does, you don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit. Now you will notice your pool noodle is going to start crackling. It's because hot glue kind of melts this, but it doesn't matter for this instant. Now I'm holding my pool noodle and I'm taking the extra fabric and I'm pulling it really tight up over. And I'm straightening out my sides and we have glue on the side so I'm going down over the edge and pressing the fabric into that glue and this is what you've got okay you have that lump in the center where the pool noodle is so I'm taking my corner and I'm putting my finger right where the pool noodle the bottom of the pool noodle is just like you're wrapping a present. And I'm just folding, folding it up. So you've got that. And I'm putting a little bit of glue along the pool noodle where this fabric touches. And we're making his shoes. And I'm just pressing that in. So this is what it should look like. And we're doing the same thing to the other side. Now you want to pull this fabric tight. You don't want any excess fabric or any gaps showing on this. So that's what we've got. Okay, sort of looks like a bat. I'm taking this side and I'm folding it over the top and I'm, I'm 
straightening out my fabric as I go along. And I'm pulling it tight and I'm going to put glue on the top of the pull noodle. And I'm going to press this fabric onto that. And we're doing the same thing this way. But when you go, take your second side over the top, hi, honey, fold this cut edge under a little bit so, so it gives it a finished look. So, Heather, since you just hopped on, I'll show you what we've got so far. And hold that so you've you got your shoe really tight. And you have your fabric coming up to a B. So we are making, I can't say the, you'll see. I can't say the name because it is a trademarked item, which I did not know. This is the boy. We got him done. This is a three-part series. And this is the little girl. So this is what your shoe looks like, and you need to do this to both of them. Now, where this fabric comes up to a B, we're taking ribbon, where did I put, there it is, and I am making two little tiny bows. Just So I'm using black because the shoes are black. I'm making two tiny little bows, and that's going to be the tie of his shoes. Heather, I am getting a lot of response, a lot of questions about your leprechaun you made. Just two little bows. And I'm gluing them right where this fabric comes to a point. People really like your leprechaun and your garland that you made. So there you go. Okay, so we're going to do that again to the other one. Finger press to find your center. And then glue your piece of pool noodle. It took me quite a while to figure out all how to do all of this. that Heather let me know when you do it I'll video you and we'll post it so I'm putting glue along both sides pulling my fabric tight up over and down over into that glue take my corner fold it up and glue it Now, those of you who say you can't do this, this is just squares and rectangle and a lot of hot glue. So you can make something like this. Now, you can do tiny ones, the Easter eggs. Um, you can do them as favors. On Amazon, and I forgot to post that link yesterday, you can buy the eggs that are the size of, like, leg pantyhose used to come in. So, um... And I will post that link. And I'm just using a little bit of glue because you don't want to use too much glue and then it uh, squeeze out and ruin your project here. So we have both of his shoes done. I'm going to set those aside. Now we're going to take the fabric for his body. I 
was shocked how big around he is. He's 27 inches. Now, we're gonna, this is the big one we're doing. I'm gonna lay it down and we're going just about an inch above where the two pieces go together. And we're gonna put a little bit of glue. And take the edge of our fabric and stick it into that glue. So I'm guesstimating where the center back is. That's where I'm starting. I'm gonna pull my fabric back and I'm just gonna start putting a straight line, just a bead of glue all the way around. Now because this egg, even though it is painted, it's still plastic, so don't put a lot of, a big line of glue because by the time you get to the other end, it's gonna be hardened because it hardens really, really quick. So I'm going probably about four, maybe five inches at a time. Now, if your glue seeps out above, it's okay, because this whole top edge is gonna be covered with that ruffle. And you just roll him around and keep gluing until you're back to where you started. And I'm pressing the fabric into the glue as I go along. Now, if you have to, you can measure an inch up from where the two pieces go together so that you can keep your line straight but I'm just eyeballing that inch all the way around. And I'm pulling the fabric tight as I go around. So there we are, we're back to where we started. I'm gonna fold this lip out under because we don't want raw edges showing on the finished one and I'm just going to glue it down. So then I'm gonna take this seam that we folded under and I'm gonna glue it the rest of the length of this fabric. Just on the egg part, you don't need to do the lower half because we're going to fold it under, but you want anything that's going to be seen to be neat. I, I take my projects and I look at all six sides of it, all four sides, top and bottom. Even though most things, the bottom's never going to be seen, I want my bottoms to look right because on things that I sell, I think, would I buy that? And if I wouldn't buy it, if the bottom's unfinished, then I don't, I don't sell it that way. So I'm putting him in my lap and I'm gonna fold all this fabric down and I'm gonna put glue in the center. Now the part that we started with, I'm gonna push this over into that glue. And then this folded part, I'm gonna glue down also. So you want to make sure that you're doing the center here. So I'm taking the front part and I'm going to glue it to the center or on the, on the bottom. I'm pulling my sides out. This is what you've got. Okay. I'm pulling my sides out. Making sure that they're all straight. And I'm going to glue those in the center too. So when you get done with this, you have four corners on this bottom. That's why I'm gluing it this way. So we made our bottom into a box looking. See that? So when you flip it up, 
he has these points at each corner. So we're going to set him aside and let that dry up. Now we've got his legs. Now these on this one was 14 inches by 5 inches. We're going to fold the Fold it into the center and fold it into the center and then we're going to put a bead of glue right down where the two meet in the center. So we just made a tube is what we're making. So this is open all the way through. So we just made a tube and we're doing that twice because our half of pool noodle has to go inside of this. Now this seam that we just made is the back of your leg. See, totally open. Our pool noodle, we're gonna find the center. And I, and like I said, I'm eyeballing most of this. And we're gonna cut a V to the center, but not completely. We're not cutting it in half. We're just cutting a V out of each side. In sewing, this is called a dart. And don't throw your little pieces of pool noodle away. You need them Monday. So we're not cutting completely through this. We're leaving about a finger's width from the point of one dart to the other. And this is, this is how our knee bends. So you can use these little tiny pieces on Monday. So there you go. So it will bend now. Now if you wanted at this point, you can glue this bent. But I'm not. Hi Stephanie. But I'm not. Because the more you work the leg, it will stay bent. See, I've just, just been pressing this a little bit and it's staying that way. But you can glue this and make it permanently bent. Okay? So we're going to shove with the cut part on the back where our seam is, we're going to put these inside the leg. Once you get it started, it'll slide right in. And now we've got our leg and there is dimension to it and it still will bend okay so you need a portion up here and you need a portion of your fabric down here that does not have a pool noodle this is where it's going to attach to him and this is where we're putting our shoe so I'm probably going to have to cut this down a little bit more because you don't want the pool noodle up under him okay so I'm cutting probably another inch off of there and I might have to cut a little bit more okay so I'm going to do the same thing to this one since I already cut that one I'm just going to cut another portion off of there so I'm finding my center and cutting my dart out And I put my finger right at the edge of this point just so I don't accidentally cut through. If you do, you can glue it back together. And I'm taking my pieces and I'm putting in what we're using on Monday. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything about Monday, but I am going to tease you about it. And I'm going to slide it in 
to the leg. Now you need more fabric at the top of your leg than you do the bottom. So we're going to grab him and I'm going to lay him up. Let me do it this way so you can see. So I'm taking our leg with the seam we made toward the back. Okay, so the seam should be on this side. This is the front. There's his face. And we're going to glue these on the bottom here. Now, if you're not going to go any further making what we're doing Monday, if you just want the egg head, then what I would do after you get your legs glued on, I would take another piece of fabric and just glue all along the bottom just to give it a finished look because otherwise if you look at the bottom, you're going to see two legs glued on. I always like to finish everything, so I want all my stuff to be finished. So where this point is where all sides of the fabric came together, I am gluing this right above there. And I'm making sure, I'm looking to make sure that I have it on the side, the leg on the side. And I'm just gluing this. I'm just pushing it down. Ouch. Now at this point, you're going to have to put some glue along the inside edge here too. And the whole time, everything I glue, I'm pressing the fabric into the glue to make sure that it stays. So at this point, you can hold your leg up, push the pool noodle down some more, just so it's resting right on the front of the body. The, the noodle's not glued in there. Um, but it's going to stay because we're gluing both ends. So when you sit him up... He'll fall over if you don't have, if the noodle is up under him. So you can adjust the pool noodle at this point. So we're doing the same thing to this one. And I'm making sure that my, the seam we made is in the back. So I'm going to glue the inside edge. And then I'm going to put glue right along here. Right along the bottom. And press this all together. So Stephanie, since you just joined, yes, Heather, I am. Everything I make, I sell. And you can and you can always special order a special color. But wait till you see what I'm doing Monday. Monday is going to take these totally over the top. So let me show you the bottom. You have where all four pieces of fabric. Oh yes, yeah, Stephanie, I'll show you the, uh, the two small ones I finished. So on the bottom, you have all four pieces of fabric, the, the sides that came together. And then you have your legs. So if you're not going to do what Monday, you're ju you just want this. And these would be adorable for a baby shower centerpiece. And then the mom could take it home and use it as a decoration in the room. Cover this with another piece of fabric. Just glue another piece on just to give the bottom a finished look. But there you go. That's what we've got so far. So my pool noodles are starting to come out. Let me push them back up in there. And we're going to put his shoes in there. So the shoes that we just made, we're going to glue all the inside there. Push it together, making sure that all the layers of that fabric, because remember we folded it several times, so all those layers are glued. Then we're taking this top portion, oh my bow come off, And we're going to put it inside the pant on both of them. Let 
Now, like I said yesterday, you can turn this into a bunny. You can turn it into a Santa Claus. You can turn it into a leprechaun. You can turn it into a doll, like I did the pink one. Um, there you go, Stephanie. There's the one of the small ones. And she don't have a hat, so I just gave her a big fluffy bow up there. I gotta get another pool noodle for her legs. And here's the guy. He's got this big feather in his hat. Now this feather was a feather duster I picked up and tore apart. <laughs> and his hat is made out of one of these. They come out at 4th of July. There's a four pack of them. They're, they're for favors. Uh, a Dollar Tree, and I covered it in fabric and trims. So we're going to glue his shoe in, and we're going to go little at a time all the way around, and that that holds your pool, pool noodle in. You don't want to glue your pool noodle because you want your leg to bend because we cut that V out. I tried gluing the pool noodle into the fabric, and then my fabric was stiff and it wouldn't let the leg bend. So it's just sitting in there, but the, it's glued to the, under the body and it's glued at the shoe. But you can make these, if you're doing some of a party, you can make them in the special colors and I'm just squeezing it together. Now this is a total glue gun project. Now the one I saw at a show, that was totally a sewn project. Even her egg was sewn. But when I spotted this egg and those little ones at the Dollar Tree, I thought, oh, I can do what she did and not sew it at all. Just make, and you're, you're going to have thousands of glue strings. And then, like I said yesterday, I've been thinking about a project for about six months, maybe longer. And then when I'm working on something that I've never done before, I dream about it. And I sat straight up in bed and said, I can make the two of those one. So that's what we're doing <laughs> on Monday. And you can see, you can make this into a soldier for Christmas. So there you go. So there's what we've got. Hi, Linda. So there's his shoes. There's his legs, his pants. And there's the upper part of his pants. We got to do arms. But all along the top of his pants here, we're putting this big ruffle that we did. Now I scalloped the edge of this. Now, if you're only going to make him, you need to put weight on the inside of here because, as you see, he doesn't want to sit flat because of his legs. Even if I bring his legs, the pool noodle push it down more, it doesn't want to sit, so he needs weight. Or you can put something on the inside, on the bottom of the egg, like I used on the little ones, I used a big can lid. You can use something like that on the inside of his pants to make him sit. Or on the bottom here and then cover the whole bottom with your fabric to make it, to dress it up. So we're going to glue this ruffle that we made all along the very top edge here. And then we're going to do his arms. But see, he sits perfectly fine on the edge. Absolutely no problem. But if you're going to sit him in like in a little chair or something, he needs something for weight if you're not going to do what we're doing Monday. So I'm, I'm going putting a small bead of glue right at the very top edge of his pants. And I'm just going to take this ruffle and push it right in there. Now, I was calling him what he is yesterday. But... That is a copyrighted item. So I'm calling him an egghead. So 
So when you do these videos, they really scrutinize everything that is said. You could say what you want. I cannot. <laughs> so the lady I'm taking classes from was watching my video yesterday and warned me about calling him what he is. Because if my videos will be flagged for dog barking because they say that's copyrighted material. I don't know how that's copyrighted. Um, they will flag me for saying his real name. I still have not gotten those three videos back yet. Even though I took a video of my dog, a neighbor's dogs barking, they haven't answered me yet. So there we go. So he's dr dressed in this men's uh, flannel uh, suiting material and this gray and black paisley. And I had just enough of this trim to put at the top of that. And I didn't realize it until a little while ago, but he's going to look like he's going to a black tie affair. But that's okay. Even eggheads have to do that, right? Sometimes. So we're going to take this black paisley fabric. And his arms. I have all my dimensions written here. You need two pieces, four inches wide by 14 long. And I didn't cut it. Or did I? No, I did not. So I thought I had all my pieces cut. So we're gonna do, we're gonna cut them. We need two pieces, 14 inches long, by four inches. And I'm doing my normal way I cut fabric when I'm crafting. I don't do this when I'm sewing. I only do it when I'm crafting, and that's ripping. So there's one. But that is a great way to find out if your fabric, if you get fabric, like used fabric, and it is, um, you're not sure if you have a straight edge. If you make a tiny little slit on the edge and rip it, it will give you a straight edge. So we're doing the same thing with this as we did with the legs. We're going to fold it in the middle and just make a tube, okay? Now, the, this does not need anything on the inside, any kind of a filler. There was a wrinkle in that fabric right there, so just did that little portion first. This glue gun has its own stand, but it doesn't really stand. <laughs> now you're wondering why these arms are so long, right? I'm going to show you. going to take one end of your tube and we're going to tie a knot. You don't want this to be a tight knot. You want to work the, the knot as far down to the edge of your fabric as you can. You just want it to be a loose knot. That's his hand. So when you get this on the front side, 
you want the you want the fabric going across so you just have to play with this until you get it looking like that okay this is your back you can tell where it's all looped together but <laughs> oh Heather <laughs> I bet that's a mess <laughs> and we're gonna put glue just a little bit on the inside I do Heather I need fluff and then glue it in the back too <laughs> so Charlotte had herself some fun huh <laughs> We're doing that to both. Yes, Heather, when we were staying there, one morning I got up and cleaned up fluff all over the living room from something she tore up. And her mother was quite upset with her when she came upstairs. So I'm not sure what it was that she tore up, but Mallory was upset with her. So... Charlotte gets bored and she has to entertain herself. So there we go. We got another hand. Let's bring him back over. Now this cut edge of fabric, we're going to fold down just a little bit. So we're gluing his arms. Hold them and see how you want them. And then flip it backwards. I'll show you in a second and glue it. And I'm putting some glue inside the tube also. And I'm really pressing that in there. So then I'm bringing my arm back. So what we've done, glued it backwards and then bring it forward. And then we're going to put some more glue underneath of that. And that gives you that really nice folded, really nice look. So we're going to glue this. Now you can play around with the angle that how you want his arm to be. But I like it coming down a little bit. The arm just coming down a little bit. So I'm going a little bit forward and I'm putting some glue on the ruffle and gluing the arm there also. Because you want this glued part of his arm to be as flat as you can get it. And we're doing the same thing. So when I'm putting this arm on, I'm looking to make sure that I'm putting it exactly the same on both sides. A dog toy. <laughs> so you could also do it this way. Just fold this under. Whichever way is easier for you. Push that down. Just so you got a clean edge there. Mallory spends a fortune on that dog's toys. She should go to Dollar Tree and get them for as many as Charlotte goes through.
Okay, there's his arms. Now we're going to bring his hands together in the front. I can get a hold of the other one. And we're just going to glue them one right on top of the other. Just, they're barely going to touch. Just like corner to corner. I'm going to glue just a little bit there. So there you go. Now you can put something in his hand, like her. I put flowers in her hand. Yeah, I put flowers in his hand too. You could put something in his hand. I think after we get Mondays done, I might put one of these little guys in his arms. And I'll show you that on Monday. I'll work it out. So then his hat. Let's finish his hat. Now this is just a top hat from the party section at Dollar Tree. See, it was orange. And it was all glittered, and I just painted right over top of the glitter. It did give it a nice, like a suede feel, painting over that, um, the glitter. It does feel like suede, but it's just that cheap plastic. But make sure when you paint this, now you can cover this in fabric, you can cover it in felt. Um, go up a little bit on the inside, just so if anybody looks under the on the underside of him, you don't see any of that orange. But it already had that glittered band, so I left that. So, we have these feathers from this feather duster I took apart. I have a whole shoe box of them. And these are all like ostrich plumes. I have purple ones in here. I mean, they were all colors. Here's a different color one. Let's use that one. So we're gonna put this on his hat. So he is a really decked out dude. So I'm gonna cut some of this uh, quill off here or whatever that's called. That <laughs> shot across the room. <laughs> and I got feathers now going everywhere. Can you see those? <laughs> I'm gonna glue it on the side of his hat, on the back side of the feather. I'm putting some glue and I'm going to glue it so it's standing upright. Oh, I think I got a feather up my nose. So there you go. Got his feather in his hat. So we need to make him a bow tie. We need to make him a tie for his hat so the bow tie is nine inches long by three inches and I have that cut I also cut a piece of tool the tool is it's black so I'm not sure you can see it six by two three and then I just cut a strip that I'm going to use to tie it all together so just like the arms and legs, we're going to make a tube. I have glued myself to this project so much. <laughs> I normally don't make a lot of fabric glue gun projects like this one. We're taking our ends putting them in the middle, just folding it, the ends right to the middle, and we're going to glue it. As many feathers I got floating around here, I could put a feather in this too. I'm taking this small piece of tool, and I'm just going to, I get glue on my hands and I'm sticking to everything. I'm going to lay it on the back side of the bow tie. And the tie, the piece of tool I'm using as a tie, I'm going to lay it on 
and I'm going to tie this all together in a knot. I picked up a black tool ribbon and I didn't realize it until today when I went to use it. It has little holes all over it and I can't use it. Okay, Heather. Love you too, honey. So we have our bow tie and it's got tool and it's tied together with tool. And I have a button. This is just a plastic button that looks like it has gems on it. I'm going to cut the shank off the back. And I'm going to glue it in the center. And then we're going to glue this to his neck. Right here under his lip. So there's his bow tie. Do I have everything on him? <laughs> so let's put a bow over top of the feather because I don't like the way that just the end of the feather is there. So I have a small piece of this left and I'm just going to fold it to the center and glue it. I have a piece of tool. I'm just going to add to it. I am forever going to be cleaning glue strings off this table. I have an embroidery machine sitting on both sides of me. I have them covered up because I didn't want all this to go all over it. I'm going to take a piece of this black ribbon and tie this together. So I have a piece of tool and then this trim. I don't even know where I got this trim at. I was digging through my trims to find something to match the fabric. And I don't know what I ever would have used that for. But I had just enough to go around his collar. Okay, making sure I have tool and ribbon on both sides. I'm going to glue this right over top or the bottom of that feather. I don't like the way that looks. I scrutinize every single thing I make, everything, to make sure that if I was buying this, would somebody, you know, would I buy it? Even things that I that I make that I'm not selling, that's I scrutinize it. I've been working on the giveaway. So the giveaway is if you belong to Facebook Apple Dolly Creations and YouTube Apple Dolly Creations, your name will be put in a drawing, two of you, and you will be getting a really nice gift. It's turning out much better than I thought. So there's the hat. Now, the little one, this hat, when I covered it on fabric and everything, now every inch of fabric on his hat is glued. There's no air space between the fabric and the hat. It's all glued down. I used um, E6000 and spread it with my finger all over to make sure that that fabric was totally adhered to this hat. And I hot glued it on his head. This morning when I came in, it was off. It, it, it had fallen off. And I did hold it really tight on his head for, for a while. So I re-glued it with E6000. Oh, no, this is Gorilla Glue. So I'm gluing this one because it's a lot larger hat. 
on his head. So we're going to figure out where the hat touches his head and glue this on. I'm gluing it at an angle because I was holding it earlier. I don't like it straight up and down, but I do like it at an angle. And I'm going to put my thumbs on both sides where this hat is touching his head. And that's where I'm putting the glue. So it's also touching in the front. So I'm putting some glue and I'm putting on, on the inside, on the inside of the rim. So this guy, he is decked out. He's ready to go on, on the town. There you go. What do you think? There's the shoes. You know what? I have his hat on backwards. The feather's going the wrong way. I'm glad I saw that now. There. That, oh, that looks much better. Okay. There we go. I'm looking at on the camera and I'm thinking, that hat doesn't look right. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? $3 for the egg. $1.25 for the hat. And the fabric and trims I had, I didn't buy anything. The buttons I had. The pool noodle I had a piece of because I put them under my back doors for air. So I just had the pieces of the pool noodle. But if you had to pick up a pool noodle, it's $1.25. There you go. There's his shoes. <laughs> Thanks. But isn't he all dressed up? Isn't he gorgeous? I love him. So I might have to go get another one and do a female all dressed up to go with him. That would be cute. But you can make these, as I said, any colors, any decorations, babyish. You can, you can make him into a toy soldier by the fabrics and the hat you use. Hi, Mark. But I think he turned out adorable and his legs do bend. The more you work with that, the V's we cut out of that pool noodle, the more his leg will bend. So when you sit him, his leg will bend. But Monday, what we are doing with this guy is going to blow your mind, honestly. But there we go. Okay, there's that one. Let me show you the other two again. Now, this is the Dollar Tree or the Family Dollar or the Dollar General egg, the Easter egg. Now, these two are the Family Dollar egg. Here's her. Now, I still got to get a pool noodle for her legs. I left the backs of her legs open so I can slip it in. But she's got a big fancy bow on her head. She has little flowers in her hands. She's got lots of lace, a lace skirt, bows. There's her. And here's the little boy. There's his hat and he's got a piece of a feather. He's got flowers and his bow tie. But these turned out much, much cuter than I thought they would. So now Monday, these two are going to be completely finished when you see them. But we're going to do this guy. We're going to finish him up on Monday. Now, I'm telling you right now, all those pieces of pool noodle, those little tiny slivers, you keep because we're using them Monday. And I'll show you how. So now that I've got you totally intrigued, 
Didn't she turn out adorable? Wouldn't she be cute in a little girl's room? That's what I'm doing. Going to finish her up Monday. She's going to be made for a little girl. He's going to be made for a little boy's room. But he is going to turn out fabulous. I guarantee it. So he is finished right now. If you're going to leave him like this, like I said, put another piece of fabric all over the bottom to cover up all those edges of fabric just so he has a finished look. And I just knocked his hat off because his glue is not dry. There we go. But who knew you could take a party hat and dress this up like this? Because this is how they come. <laughs> Mr. Egg Strand, yeah. <laughs> Well, I can't say his name anymore, but so I'm calling him Eggheads. But this little guy, he's ready for a black tie affair. All right, everybody. Monday, 3 o'clock, we're going to finish these guys up, and you're going to be amazed. Thanks, Stephanie. You're going to be amazed at how we're taking him up another notch. Love you guys. Thank you. Have a great day.